Hey everyone, it's Tara. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Tara Talks Books, where we talk everything bookish. So today I'm going to be doing my February wrap up. I definitely read more books in February than I ended up reading in January, so this was a much better reading month. Um, I did end up getting to six books, so I'm very excited to share what I read. The first one was part of my 24 in 2024, and that one is Like a Love Story by Abdi Nazemin. So this one is a historical YA romance. I ended up listening to it on audiobook. So this follows Reza, an Iranian boy who comes to America and he is grappling with his homosexuality amongst the AIDS crisis in New York City, 1989. And so it follows him and his journey. Um, I really enjoyed this coming of age, finding who you are story. There's definitely an element of found family in it as well. I really enjoyed that aspect. I also really liked um, the relationship between like all of the characters. There is Art, who is a boy he meets at um, his new high school. There's obviously Reza, and then there's also Judy and Judy is um, another girl he meets at high, in high school at his new high school and it's it's really them three kind of finding who they are in the book mostly it's about Reza um, but you definitely get bits and pieces from Art and Judy and I really enjoyed that aspect of it I liked all of three of the characters equally so I thought that was um, a really good aspect to it I also enjoyed um, her uncle. Uh, he was a really good role model, Judy's uncle. He was a really good role model for Art and Judy. And it really, there's a fracture in their relationship in the story. It is part of the story. And you learn about it and why as it goes on. Um, and he really tries and brings them back together because he realizes their relationship is important. And I loved that aspect. I ended up giving this one a four star. It's a really good um, YA romance. The next one I read, I actually started a while ago, um, but that one is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. I've been doing this as a read aloud with my children. We've been going through the series. And so this is obviously the third book in the Harry Potter series. And obviously it follows Harry, Ron, and Hermione as they get up to hijinks. Um, I enjoyed diving deeper into the world of Harry Potter. I read this aloud again with my kids and we all enjoyed finding out a bit more about like Harry, like Harry's past kind of, but also Harry's parents past and being introduced to some new characters. This is obviously a middle grade fantasy and um, we ended up, I think we all kind of gave this one a four star. We definitely liked that it had some more action towards the end, but I did feel it was a little bit of a slow pickup. Um, so yeah, <laughs> we will obviously continue on through our read aloud. The, um, the next one is a really, I believe this one's a chunker. So um, we're excited about that one, but we know it's going to take us a while. <laughs> The next one I read um, because of the Black Hat Book Coven, this was their pick for the month of February, and that one is Ava Evergreen's Semi-Magical Witch by Julie Abe. This is another middle grade fantasy. I ended up listening to this one on audiobook, and um, I ended up giving it a four star. So this is about Ava Evergreen, who wants to earn the rank of novice witch before she turns 13, because if she doesn't, she'll lose her magic forever. So this is a simple task for most witches, but Ava has only a pinch of magic. So her novice witch quest takes her to the coastal town of Ottery, where she needs to help the town and get the mayor to sign off on her quest. And it goes from there. I did think that this one was a cute witchy read, um, very like coming of age, finding who you are. I liked that aspect and it follows Ava again as she comes into her own. I loved her flame fox and her friends in Ottery. So definitely a cute one to check out. The next one I ended up finishing um, in the month of February. I actually started it in December. And like I said, I was in a really bad slump, like December, end of December, 
um, beginning of January and it has nothing to do with the book. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, but that one is Love Like Farms by B.K. Borison. This is a contemporary romance and I ended up giving it a four star. This follows Stella who owns a Christmas tree farm and in an effort to save it, she enters a contest with an Instagram influencer um, with a $100,000 prize. Stella lies on her application to make it feel more romantic and give the farm an edge. Um, she says she owns the farm with her boyfriend, but she doesn't actually have one. <laughs> so in comes Luca, her best friend. So the tropes in this one are fake dating and friends to lovers. This was a cute romance. I really loved the atmosphere of the Christmas tree farm. I enjoyed Stella's like business partners and the townspeople. Um, I really liked the like small town feel and I really felt I ended up giving this one a four star um, simply because I feel like the fake dating was very low stakes which I feel like some people would really enjoy that aspect of it. Um, it kind of felt like sometimes you can feel the tension or the in fake dating, but because they were such best friends and they really knew each other, the fake dating felt very low stakes. It almost felt like they were together, which um, is actually an aspect um, that I enjoyed at first, but then I felt when we were coming to kind of the culmination of deciding whether this was going to be um, a fake relationship or we were going to take it further, it didn't have that high stakes that sometimes it does in fake dating romances. Um, but again, I did enjoy it overall. I gave it a four star. I loved Stella and Luca's relationship. I loved seeing like their past and then how they interact now. I thought that was beautiful. They do have a beautiful relationship. Luca is definitely a cinnamon roll hero as well. The next one I read was also part of my 24 in 2024, and that one is Long Bright River by Liz Moore. This is considered a mystery, and I ended up giving this one a four star as well. I had a lot of four star reads this, this month, so, you know, that's a pretty good reading month. Um, this follows two inseparable sisters that find themselves at odds. Um, this is set in Philadelphia, in a Philadelphia neighborhood that is, like, changed by the opioid opioid crisis. Um, so Casey lives on the streets in the clutches of addiction. Mickey patrols those same streets as a cop and they don't speak anymore but Mickey learns that Casey is missing while there is like a string of murders in the district. So obviously she's worried and becomes nearly obsessed with finding her and the story goes from there. I enjoyed that this spans like past and present. I do think that this leans more domestic fiction with a twist or with like a mystery element. Um, I was definitely more invested in the sisters relationship and delving into their lives more than the actual mystery. I enjoyed learning more about them and their relationship and who they were. Um, I do think that this one has quite a few triggers. There are triggers for exploitation death of a parent, grooming, drug use and addiction. So this is definitely a heavier book, um, but definitely one to check out if you can handle those, you know, those types of things in your books. It was really well done. And last but not least is The Aliens Prize by Zoe Draven. I, I did end up reading this one because the Beam Me Up book club. Um, so this is a sci-fi romance. And Kate is a human and she's abducted from Earth and then she's won as a prize to an alien who has to like fight to the death to claim a human female and that place is called the pit and a um, bunch of aliens go there and like fight to gain female, um, to gain human females. And so Voxaon is the prime leader of Luxuria and has a duty to his people because his race is dwindling. So he goes to the pit for a female only to find his fated mate. But Kate only wants to return to her life on Earth. Um, so the story obviously goes from there. This was a spicy fated mates alien romance. It wasn't my favorite alien romance, but it was a solid three star read for me. So those are all the books that I read during the month of February. Let me know what you read in the comments below. Like and subscribe if you'd like to. Bye.